The demand for food assistance remains extremely high right now. There is an effort, though, to remove barriers that make it difficult for eligible families to get food stamps. Yeah, it turns out that there are so many families out there that qualify for the SNAP benefits, but they've never enrolled. And here to tell us what they are doing to help people is Claudia Rodriguez. She is with the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Thank you so much for coming on, Claudia. Good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. Okay, so talk to us about how many people actually fall into this category. How many people are we talking about? In, in the three priority communities we're targeting, which are North Lawndale, Austin, and Inglewood, we have at least 8,000 households that may be eligible for SNAP but not enrolled. Okay, so uh, I want to make sure I've got this straight. Are people showing up to the food pantry they're in need, we know that, but perhaps have never even applied for government assistance. And if so, what do you want people to know this morning? Exactly. There are a lot of people that are eligible and are not applying for many different reasons. People, you know, may have been denied in the past or or just don't know how to apply for, for benefits or maybe don't have, you know, the money for transportation or access to to internet to apply. Uh, I want to make people aware of a new pilot that, that we are launching in, in, in these three communities. You know, the Food Depository has been offering benefit outreach assistance for over a decade now. We've been helping people enroll in benefits, but this new pilot we're very excited to share. Uh, our goal is to close the SNAP enrollment gap in these communities. So work very closely with community partners who are serving the residents of these communities and develop a community plan, uh, develop a community plan to close the SNAP enrollment gap and also empower the partners uh, to build their capacity so they can provide benefit outreach in their communities. And so people can have more options as far as where they can go apply. So, yeah, we understand that there's a benefit to communities when the people who can show the government that they have a need um, and that allows the government to do other things for the community. Can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So, you know, SNAP, it, it, it develops, a, has an economic impact, I should say, in, in communities. So anytime that, that people are not applying for benefits, people that are eligible for benefits, we're leaving money on the table. Um, for every SNAP, $1.50 in SNAP benefits, it generates up to $1.79 in economic activity because the more people that have SNAP benefits, the more demands there are for goods. And the more people that you know, local uh, stores are, are hiring. You know, you guys were such a lifeline during the pandemic. We got less than thirty seconds. Um, are you seeing a light at the end of the tunnel? Are you seeing fewer people showing up in need? You know, we are still serving um, more people than we were before the pandemic started, but um, less people than at the peak, uh, which was last summer. But you know, food insecurity rates are still very high, and um, we'll continue needing you know volunteers and donations so we can continue doing this work so if anyone is interested in joining our efforts please go to chicagosfoodbank.org and if there are any community partners that want to partner with us on this pilot um, they can email uh, at s-b-e-c-h-t-o-l-d at gcfd.org all right great information out there hopefully people uh, listening now will realize that you know they can benefit from these snap exactly. benefits and in addition to going to the food pantry. So thank you very much, Claudia Rodriguez with the Greater Chicago Food Depository. All right. 750 uh, right yeah. now. Let's check in with Jake, see what he's